Hello everyone, Clint Seeley here. I just wanted to record another uh, quick quick tutorial for y'all to watch. Um, not really teaching anything, just kind of showcasing some of the new stuff uh, and extras that you got bundled in with the software that you may not know about unless you read every page of the user reference manual, which I believe is 478 pages long. Um, some of these tips are included in that, but I just wanted to show you visually on screen via the recording. Uh, some cool new things. As I discover them, I just thought I would pass it along, share it with with you, that experience. So, one thing I noticed is CorelDRAW Essentials X6 has a lot of really good clip art uh, in, bundled in with it that's already in the CorelDRAW vector format. A lot of that stuff that is free for you to use, you just may not know where it is, and you may want to have it and play with it and just kind of have it at your disposal. So I'm going to show you my process on that and how I discovered the clip art and organized it to where it's easy for me to access it directly from the program. That's what I believe in is just making everything easy. So the first thing that we're going to do is go find that clip art folder. I'm going to, then, I'm going to copy it and I'm going to put it in a place in a folder in an area that I access quite often. So if we let me remind you I am using Windows 8 so the user interface may be a little different for you if you're using Vista or Windows 7 um, but I think everybody that gets a new computer these days they're kind of forced into Windows 8 so that's the the operating system that I'm recording in. Windows 8 we have a little file uh, your little menu here where you can search files we'll, we'll click on that file explorer and you can see under libraries I have added a library called embroidery and that's just where I choose to put most if not all of my embroidery files and the projects that I'm working on um, so you won't have this embroidery library on your computer I believe you can right click here and go to new and you can click here and create a new library if you would like to do that as well it makes it really streamlines things and makes it easy you can click and then type in and you know embroidery or whatever you choose to call it you could create your own library for strictly for Bernina you know name it whatever you want I named mine embroidery so you'll see you'll see that here but I'm not going to search uh, the embroidery library right this minute I want to go out and find the clip art that is bundled with Corel so I'm just going to go to the C drive and then I'm gonna to go to the search window up here and I'm gonna type in clip art because that's the name of the folder and the computer will do a search it may take you a minute um, some computers are faster than others so be patient that list will start populating and I want to make sure I'm grabbing the right clip art folder and you'll see the first one that popped up is going to be the correct one um, public public documents Corel content x6 that's where this folder is located so if you can imagine if you're trying to find the clip art from the program you'd have to dig through all of these sub sub menus just to find the clip art and you would soon forget that this clip arts there so what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna click here on this clip art let me double click it and I'll show you what's in there you got all these subfolders and inside the subfolders you have all of these free clip art files here look at all of these a bunch of them so I'll go back and I'm gonna go back oh well, I may have went back too far sorry oh no I'm fine okay here I'm gonna click on the clip art folder and it's the one that says you know that looks like this content x6 should be in there I'm gonna right click and then I'm gonna hit copy so I'm gonna leave that folder where it's at it doesn't take up a lot of space on your computer I'm just gonna copy it then I'm gonna go over here to the left under my libraries to embroidery and you see I've got all of these files in my embroidery library I'm then just gonna right click and hit paste and that clip art folder should paste now I'm just for uh, just to make things even easier than that I'm gonna rename this folder and I'm gonna name it let's see Corel uh, clip art or vector 
clip art. That makes it even more recognizable and easier to find. And if we double click, you'll find that we've got all of the all of these subfolders that's just full of all kinds of clip art. Now, I'm going to show you how to use that. Now that we know where it's at and it's going to be easy to find. Let me just close this menu and let's bring up the Corel Draw or bring up the Designer Plus start a new document and then I'm going to switch over to the art canvas now there's a couple ways to do it here you can hit the import control I even go over here to where it says load artwork same thing it's it's an import function so let's hit import then we're gonna go and click on our embroidery library and there we see right right where we left it Corel vector clip art let me double click on that and what kind of artwork are we looking for let's go to special occasions now here we have a bunch of files that are named completely random things so you have no indication whatsoever of what you're looking at even when you click it there's no indications like hey Clint I have no idea what I'm clicking on here hey no problem if your if your import folder looks like this just go over here and we're gonna do let's say large icons and now you can see what the clip art looks like because there the art itself does not have a unique name that's an indication of what you're looking at so now we can just scroll through and visually browse through this free clip art that's gonna be very usable and very easy to digitize for embroidery let me get boy these look really fancy and cool but let me Halloween's coming up oops hold on somebody was calling me sorry Halloween is coming up I think I saw a pumpkin so I would just click on this pumpkin import hit the enter button on your keyboard and there's a pumpkin now this is already vector art okay this is very clean vector art what size do we have here two by two let's make this something just a little bit bigger I'll just rescale to maybe three and a half inches whatever you want it's already vectorized so all I do is hit the convert button and let's see what the program does automatically boom there you go look at that look how nice that looks just right off the bat it's beautiful now you can go in and edit it, change the fabric settings, all that kind of stuff. It's <laughs> super easy. Oh, let me show you something else that I found uh, that I really think is cool. When you when you insert a design or you, you, you auto-digitize a, a vector art and we switch back over to the embroidery canvas, here's a new tool that I found which will cycle through the colors. If you don't have colors you like or you're just going to want to cycle through and see some new... Uh, color options just click that button just keep clicking it and it's gonna go through it's just gonna keep changing the color pattern of the pumpkin and then obviously you'll get back to where you started but it really um, just at the click of one button using this cycle used colors you can see different different patterns and of course you all know how to use the color wheel already there's a a little bit of an improved design on the color wheel I won't spend any time with that right now but it's there as well uh, just kind of some cool features uh, I also noticed some some cool features with uh, fabric settings that I'll talk about later but I'll show you real quick just a sneak peek with the color settings or with the fabric settings uh, the fabric settings used to be under the settings menu not there anymore it's gonna be under design and then you can go to change your fabric settings something new that I thought was pretty cool now as we switch the fabric type okay if we're gonna put this pumpkin on uh, terry cloth say a medium weight terry cloth we would select that it also tells you the required stabilizers that you're going to want to use when embroidering this pumpkin on medium weight terry cloth looky here topping wash away backing poly mesh or cutaway two layers that's kind of that's kind of really cool that that it shows that right on the uh, dialog box for fabric settings there's all kinds of new improvements uh, just 
just little Easter eggs hidden all over this program, and I can't wait to discover them all. Anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.